Thank you all for coming. This is our sixth uh, Gnosis Ethereum meetup. Our first presentation will be Umar from Request Finance. Um, he will talk about how to pay and get paid in crypto in a compliant way. Please, Umar, join us. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> so my name's Umar. I'm from Request Finance, and today, like, uh, Kalnina said we'll speak about or I'll share a bit about how to get how to pay and get paid in crypto in a compliant way uh, in case I forget at the end thanks to Carolina and Gnosis for organizing this whole meetup I think it's a fantastic initiative and um, yeah let's get going so I know there's a room full of experts today in crypto so I want to start by asking everyone have you ever paid or been paid in crypto like for a business transaction, you sold like a service and uh, so by show of hands, has anyone paid or been paid in crypto before? Okay, great, so that's gonna be interesting. Now, for, for some of us paying or getting paid in crypto, our daily life looks like this. Uh, so we're sending wallet addresses on Telegram, on Slack, on Discord, and then the person paying is copy pasting that wallet address and uh, sending the payment. After payment is done, he has to send the, uh, the transaction hash uh, to, the, um, to the person receiving the money. And it's kind of a mess. Even at the time of payment, you have to go on, let's say, CoinMarketCap, CoinGecko to manually look for the conversion rate. So I would say if you're not using like a tool made to, for crypto, made to, uh, to handle invoices in crypto, it's quite a mess. Um, so it starts with this. Then you still need the accountant. So I've been an accountant before. I've been an accountant for eight years, an auditor. And one of the biggest pain points when you have to eventually prepare your financials is that you have to reconcile. Reconciliation is a big pain point is, and is where a lot of people take a lot of time. Um, for those of you right now not using, I would say, a dedicated Web3 invoicing tool, you would have to go to the Block Explorer and reconcile that transaction with the invoice. And as soon as you start scaling your business, you have like so many transactions and come year end, you're kind of lost. You made payments like everywhere in the world and you don't really know because you go here and you see just a zero X. There's no actual details about which, uh, what this transaction pertains to. Um, so it's quite a depressing job right now for the crypto accountant. Crypto is supposed to make our lives easier, but this guy is not very happy. Um, so what are the two possible outcomes for the title of the presentation is how to pay and get paid in crypto in a compliant way. I use the word compliant because um, I would say there's two possible outcomes come year end when you have to prepare your financials. This is an extreme example of ending up in jail, but by this what I mean is you would miss out on your transactions uh, that you would have to account for in your financial statements and come at the time of, of audit if your financials are not clean. That's why I mean by you ending up to jail. So I think everyone would agree that we need to have like, uh, for every transaction, we need to have like proper, um, um, a proper trail, like a proper invoice to back up that transaction. Um, so again, why do we need a paper trail? Um, accounting, audit, tax, I could also add uh, to fundraise. So if you need to fundraise as you scale your project, you would need to have an audit and uh, it also ties here. Um, maybe I'm going a bit fast, but Okay, so what is uh, request finance? One of the biggest value proposition with the uh, request finance, in my opinion, is we spoke about reconciliation. Uh, the fact that you have to reconcile invoice to payment. Request finance um, eliminates or gets rid of that reconciliation part. How does it work? I create an invoice. Whenever I create an invoice, the invoice is on the blockchain. 
Every time someone approves the invoice, there's detection of the approval on the blockchain. And every time, again, there's payment, there's detection of that payment. Um, so, okay, so here, so every time I create an invoice, I would see the invoice is, uh, has the status of awaiting payment. When it's approved, I would see it's approved. And when it's paid, I would see it's paid. So this shows you like just this dashboard that I don't have to reconcile anymore. My payment has been, um, um, yeah, I don't have to reconcile anymore. Uh, what is request finance? It's uh, besides invoicing, we started in, with invoicing back in 2021, but today it's, a, I would say, a comprehensive suit for anything around invoices, salaries, and expenses. Uh, I mentioned that you can, with this nice, nice dashboard, you can track, verify, and, and organize all your crypto operations is in a single tool. Uh, you don't have to use spreadsheets anymore. Um, a lot of people tell us the reason they like Request Finance is because it's a Web3 product with, which offers a Web2 experience. So every time I create an invoice or, um, or someone pays me, I would get like an automatic uh, notification uh, that my invoice has been paid. So I don't have to actually go on the Block Explorer and to actually see that. I, I see everything in my dashboard. Uh, and it allows me to scale my operations, no more manual work, no more accountant uh, being frustrated and um, yeah, not sleeping well at night, I would say. So this is an example of when your invoice gets paid, how does it look like? Um, this is a normal invoice, everyone has seen something like that. So whenever I create an invoice, I, I would denominate my invoice in fiat, in Euro, USD, GBP, whatever. And in this case, I chose to be paid in DAI. So I was paid in DAI, and I can see here the DAI amount. Um, whenever the invoice gets paid, it's automatically marked as paid there. And this looks like a proper invoice that you used to. Um, four and five, you can see actual, the, uh, the actual link to the Block Explorer. Um, again, I was an auditor before, and whenever I do an audit uh, at the end of the year, um, let's say, just a quick example, if I would be auditing like, um, the client provides me with a financial statements, income statement, balance sheet. Let's say I'm auditing the income statement and I'm auditing their marketing expenses. This would be very easy for me if the client gives me this because I don't actually have to go and reconcile Block Explorer to the actual invoice. I would ask, the client would only provide me with this invoice and I would actually have the link, like everything is here. So it makes my life easier as an auditor. It makes your life easier as a client because you don't have to waste so much time come here and. Um, so of course you can use like a centralized solution like, I don't know, Coinbase to uh, prepare an invoice, but Request Finance is fully non-custodial. We don't hold any funds. Uh, at the time of payment, you only have to, there's a button, click on pay now. We have 200 wallets integrated. And um, and so far, so we, we integrate with uh, 300 cryptocurrencies and stable coin. We are 19 blockchains, including some non-EVM uh, non blockchains like NIR, for example. Uh, regarding cryptocurrencies and stable coins, I would say Every time, if you want your cryptocurrency to be added, like on Request Finance, we can do that. We can do that in 24 hours time. You just have to ask us. And of course, accounting and tax reporting made easy. So in my accounting software, like QuickBooks Zero, I would, uh, of course, I cannot uh, have my transactions in crypto there. So everything on request would be converted in my fiat currency. So I only have to import those uh, fiat currencies into my uh, accounting software. A few stats about request finance so far. So we've, uh, since Jan 2021, 
We've processed 309 million speed in crypto and stable coins, 33,000 invoices, salaries and expenses have been processed, and we currently have 2,000 plus active users. Um, and some of these users would include Gnosis, Gnosis Chain, The Sandbox, Aave. So these, all these companies that you see, Taikai, which is uh, very popular here in Portugal, well-known uh, company, so these companies, what they use us, they use us to pay their contractors at the end of the month, the employees, they use us to, or to pay other vendors who accept uh, crypto. They use us to manage the expenses in crypto. When I go to a conference and I'm paying something in crypto, let's say, and I want to get reimbursed, like let's say I bought a ticket in USDC, I want to get reimbursed in crypto. I can use Request Finance. It's the other app which is very similar in Web2 is Expensify, so it's like the Expensify of Web3. Um, we also integrate, uh, yeah, I already said we integrate in here. Few reasons why company uses, I had to include Gnosis Chain. So Emma is the financial controller. I think she's based in London? Gibraltar. In Gibraltar, okay. So Emma's very happy because Emma, she says, request has made my job. So it allows her to keep all her invoices in one place instead of cluttering her inbox. Um, Mario from Taikai, uh, also uh, a big user of request finance. So for him, it saves him time. Before he used to take one to two days to process payments. Now he only takes him 30 minutes per month. So that's not too bad. And uh, Sebastian from uh, the CEO of the Sandbox, he loves the, the features that we have around batch payments, integration with multi-sig wallets like Gnosis Safe. Um, so to sum it up here, Emma said organization, Mario said time, and Sebastian said features. Um, it's actually already the end. So, um, building a business on crypto is not very easy. So last year, Request Finance, we published a guide called the Web3 CFO Guide. We interviewed 250 plus uh, professionals working in Web3. Uh, it's a 100 page guide and we basically compiled all of their learnings. So everything from the challenges of being a Web3 CFO, um, of ramping, invoicing, payments, treasury management, uh, what else? Financial reporting, accounting, <coughs> fair value measurement for crypto in your balance sheet. Everything is covered there. So you can scan this QR code and uh, have a link to download the guide. Again, my name is Umar. If you need to reach out to me, you can send me an email on, tele on uh, Twitter. I'm at Accountant Quits. Uh, I think we have time for some questions if you want. I can kick it off. Um, uh, I think one thing we saw in the presentation is like um, from the testimonials and you mentioned payroll, it seemed like very company focused. Uh, I was just wondering if you also like cater to individuals or if the product is mostly built for like uh, large companies. And then the second question would be if you also facilitate like cross-chain payments. Like if I have a DAI payment on mainnet, can I like pay that on Gnosis chain with USDC and it's bridged or is that something you are planning to do in the future? Okay, so first question. Um, yes, it's catered for um, freelancers. So before I actually started working for Request, I used to be a freelancer. And the first time I got paid in crypto, I prepared my invoice like in a PDF, I sent it to my client. And that's where I learned how much of a, how, much, how, how tedious it is to actually reconcile invoices when not using like a Web3 tool. So yes, anyone can use your request. It's free to sign up, it's free to use. You don't pay anything to sign up. The only person paying is the person paying. It's capped at $2 uh, per invoice. Um, but that's gonna change soon as we're implementing a subscription uh, pricing model. Uh, regarding the second question, no, we don't. Uh, so currently right now, you would need your treasury to be in that specific chain um, to be able to do the payout. But what's cool is, um, let's say you have a bunch of contractors and well, they wanna pay, be paid in some fancy token, whatever, banana token. So you would tell, the, there's a feature with requests called the invoice me feature, which actually you send them a link and it actually contains the, 
the, the chain and the currencies that you can pay on. So they would already know that they don't have to actually be asking you to be paid on some exotic chain that you don't have your treasury on. Yeah, I think on one of the slides it mentioned 10 plus fiat payments, but you don't necessarily do the off ramps. So it's possible to do payments in crypto and fiat, but not necessarily the off ramp part of it. Yeah, you can still use it for fiat. It's like then it's like bill.com uh, in Web two. It's the same thing, but most people use us for the crypto part. Yeah. You kind of started mentioning it at the end, kind of as a joke. But yeah, can you tell us all about the business model? Like, you know, who is paying for the service and how it works? Um, you mean the fees that Request Finance collects? Yeah. Okay, um, uh, good question. So basically, like I said, the issue of the invoice won't, uh, so it's gonna be free for them and it's only the payer. So that $2, that's a request finance fee. So at the time of payment, if I'm paying like a, a $1,000 uh, invoice, so I'm actually gonna be paying 1002 So $2 uh, gets pocketed uh, for requests. So that's how we make our money. But like I said, soon that's changing because we it's very cheap. It's too cheap. We, we're starting a subscription model. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I, have a, I forgot to mention this. So um, I don't know all the details around it, but let's say you're in Portugal. All of you guys live in Portugal. And there's a barrier to getting paid in crypto right now because uh, so if you go on Portal das Finances, Request Finance is not listed there. So there is a workaround to actually get paid in crypto that you would have to, you can use Request Finance, you get paid in crypto, and then you declare that the fiat equivalent on, I think it's called Recibo Verde. Recibo Verde. Uh, so that's kind of the workaround that you have to do. Maybe in the future, Request Finance will be listed in Portal das Finances. It's kind of a long process. Well, thank you very much.